So in today's video, we revisit the MeCool M8S S912L TV box that we reviewed actually quite a long time ago. Anyway, let's dive into this now because things have changed. My name is Matthew and you're watching another video by the MXQ Project. So we have actually already reviewed this box. It was quite a long time ago now. And we were very confused about this device when we first received it because it didn't have Android TV like they said it would come with. Now whether that was because there was two versions of it for some reason, I don't see why they would do that because they already had the original m 8 Pro with Android on it, not Android TV. And then they released the L model for Android TV. So it's very all very confusing and I'm not entirely sure what was going on there. But anyway, they have sent us out this one and it comes with Android TV as well as having a voice control remote. So you can use Google Assistant as well as that it's fully supporting Netflix, including the 4K as well. Anyway, let's unbox it now. Let's take a look and see what this box can do. So when we unbox it, it's nothing special. It's just the standard Meekle white box that we've come to get used to from these guys. We've got the Miku Limitest Pro L on there. We've got a very simple, straightforward instruction for using the voice control remote. And then inside, you've just got the power supply, voice control remote, obviously, and a HDMI cable. Very straightforward, very basic. So the Miku Limitest Pro L has quite a big spec. It has three gigabytes of RAM. It has 16 gigabytes or 32 gigabytes of onboard storage, depending on which one you want to go for. It has Wi-Fi dual band, 2.4G, 5G. It has that Amlogic S912 processor, which is a very good processor, by the way, guys. It can handle pretty much everything you want to throw at it in terms of video playback or gaming. And it usually scores pretty good on 22 score. Although the N22 scores have been a bit funny because Antutu don't seem to support this process at the moment so their app kind of struggles with it so you might have to choose and go and use the older version of Antutu. Anyway guys let's take a look at the video performance, the game performance and overall what we think of this. So welcome to the home screen this is the Google Greenback Launcher I'm sure if you know anything about Google Android TV this is what it comes with. This is the standard sort of system that comes with. So if you've got Nvidia Shield, this is the launcher that will come on that, just like this one. Now it's very straightforward. It's all set up for the TV. You really don't need anything other than this very simple voice control remote. And yeah, it's a very nicely laid out. I really do like the look of the lean back launcher. A lot of Android operating systems do try to mimic it. They never get quite right. This looks fantastic. So this is running Android 7.1.2 Nougat. As well as that, the system also receives system updates, which is really good to see. So Miko, no doubt, will continue to support this for the foreseeable future. The Play Store is really good. It works seamlessly. Although I have found that you can't actually search for certain apps and Tutu Play Store doesn't come up. However, we do have Aptoid already on this. So you can use that to download Antutu and certain other apps if you want to. Netflix, you Netflix lovers out there, it does work. You'll get your full 4K as well because this supports wide vinyl level 1 DRM protection. Game performance on this is exceptional. Asphalt 8, for example, is set to high with the graphics settings. The menus don't lag. Gameplay certainly does not lag. Everything runs silky smooth. As well as that, we have got Beach Buggy Racing going on here as well. Again, no problems at all. And these games, you know, tend to require, you know, a higher performance processor to run pretty well. We've tested this game on so many TV boxes. And it seems to be, as, as long as you've got decent firmware and a half-decent processor, it should run okay. But a high settings, you know, it, it's doing a pretty good job. The S912 can pretty much handle anything you can throw at it in terms of video playback. 4K, no problems at all. Here is some jellyfish files. I'm sure you've heard of them. They are just test files that we use to test the video playback of certain devices. And it handles it, no problem. That's 120 bitrate 4K file. No issues at all. 1080p. 
again no issues at all no stuttering or anything like that nice and smooth youtube playback is absolutely fine as well full 4k we're achieving and again silky smooth performance so the system performance is exceptionally good it's a very cheap box well it's relatively cheap anyway but there is a few niggling issues the system did freeze up now and again certain apps caused it to freeze so it was probably just an issue with the app rather than the system but it never did once crash on me whereas i had to restart it so that's a good thing and overall yeah not a bad performing device the remote guys is really really good the voice control works perfect and if you're used to using google assistant yeah you'll be very familiar with the way this works and it works very well however the system was a little bit sluggish certain searches i tried but you know that's just probably the way it is with this sort of thing so you're probably thinking should i go for this or a xiaomi mi box with the same sort of operating system now this device comes with two usb ports it comes with a micro sd card tray it also comes with an ethernet port as well as an AV port as well. The Xiaomi just doesn't, and a lot of these more lockdown boxes like Amazon devices don't come with an awful lot of inputs. Whereas this one, you've got your Android TV system on there. Obviously it is not rooted, you're not gonna be able to root this device or do much else with it. It's, it's, it's a lockdown device, and it's really for the Google ecosystem, if that makes sense. However, they have kept a lot more inputs and it's going to just be a lot more open a lot more easy to use i know when i was using the xiaomi mi box it was very difficult to put things in like hard drives usb sticks etc because you've only limited to one and this has just got a lot more con connectivity so in summary guys a really good tv box it's not for someone who wants a more open experience it's not rooted for example and you're not going to be able to maybe change the firmware on it I don't think you'll be able to boot like the likes of Libra Leca or anything like that, which we do enjoy doing on this channel. However, for you guys who maybe you just want a very simple device, a very powerful device, but you just want to use maybe Kodi, Netflix and all that, I don't think it can run Amazon Prime Video, or at least it won't run it at its full resolution. You will be able to sideload it and probably run it that way, but you'll probably be limited with the resolution, however that works with Amazon Prime Video, because it certainly doesn't come on the Play Store. But apart from that, really good TV box. Thanks for watching guys, I really hope you enjoyed this video. I really do like this device. It's one of the better ones we've looked at recently. My name's Matthew and you've been watching another video by the MXQ Project. Don't forget to check out the website, mxqproject.com, the Facebook group, and of course Twitter, at MXQ Project. Guys, if you've not already subscribed, consider subscribing as well as that. Don't forget to click the bell icon and you'll be notified of our videos when we release them, which is a couple of times a week, depending on what we're doing. Thanks again, guys, and we shall see you very soon.